Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's been a little while since I had a video and I've been working on this one for a little bit, not too long. Um, one of the most useful battery packs I've built is this one on the right. It's a 12 volt uh, LiPo 4, uh, 110 amp hours. It uses those long sob cells. Um, works really well. Uh, it has built in USB uh, power. It's got a 12 volt utility socket. It's got Anderson connectors on the right side there. The downsides, uh, the pros, it's all good, uh, really useful. The cons are it's pretty heavy, um, and it uses this strap to keep the lid on. Now, I could make that more secure. I could put a board in there, put screws and stuff like that, but I didn't necessarily want to do that. So using this, uh, going camping, uh, put it in the car for secondary power. You might even be able to jump a car with it. I don't know. You should. It's got a 100 amp BMS in there. Um, but it's just kind of tedious to move around and I don't feel so secure with this strap even though I've lifted it many times and it does seem to hold. Um, and so the one on the left uh, I have cells I'm going to show you here in a second that fit better in there and from I go from 110 amp hour to 75 and the weight is much better. I mean, this is so much more manageable. It's got some weight to it but it's much more manageable to take to a campsite to you put in your cart and move around a golf cart or something like that you know it's just really much more mobile um, this one has a switch here to activate the 12 volt this one has a switch as well that activates everything and so i'll show you the circuit that this uses a little bit later but let's look at the cells we're going to use for this so there we've got the top band cells 25 amp hour 3.2 lipo 4 system and so what we're going to be able to do is a 4S3P. Each one of those is 25 amp hours, so that's 75 total. So for the size, we're getting, you know, maybe 40%, maybe 30%, 33% or something like that, less capacity. But I guarantee you the weight makes it worth it. Um, and so for general things, like when I go camping and in the cold, I might take a heated blanket and run an inverter. It runs really well and should handle pretty much anything. This system does have... Two 12 volt passive capable there. It has USB C, which this one does not, uh, and it has USB A. And then it also has terminal lugs. And so all that is activated with the push button. Here's the circuit board. Uh, it's got Anderson connectors also in the back, kind of hard to see. But everything runs to the board. So it obviously has a relay with like a low voltage switch relay and then it activates the heavier stuff. And so we're gonna make some uh, a 3D printed top for this to hold the cells together that also have the bus bars and that we're gonna CNC out of aluminum. So let me bring those into the frame and we'll look at those real quick and then we'll build this pack. All right, let's go through our build of materials. We've got the enclosure and the electronics. We've got our cells. Uh, and we have our DALI BMS. Now, one thing I will make a note is that this has have a 30 amp fuse on the positive wire, and this is a 60 amp BMS. So we will, we will be going into the software and limiting that to 30 amp so we don't blow the fuse. I think the cells can easily handle that. I think they can handle 1C, so 75 amps is probably their max. Um, and then we also have our bus bars and a 3D printed... Um, closure to kind of hold them together and to isolate so there's no chances of shorts and stuff. Um, and so let me go over how we're going to wire this um, and let me go and get a top-down view of the cells and I'll review it. All right, so here we have a view of the cells. Um, this didn't turn out like I had hoped uh, just because of the size, but it does work. Um, and so we're going to have to do parallel and series and doing some series because it's a 4S system. So this will be our uh, uttermost negative, all right? And then these six here are going to be bridged to create our first junction. Then these six are going to be junctioned. And then here's where it gets a little weird. These is going to be connected to this post, this post, and this post. And we're going to have to run the bus bar through here. And that will create our, our, our bridge or series connection there. And these threes will be bridged together to create our utmost positive. And so what that kind of looks like 
right here is kind of an inverse. So you have to picture this on this side. You see, we have a bus bar that's going to take it up to our ultimate uh, negative. And then we've got a series, we've got our series, we've got our series, and then our utmost uh, positive. And I did add this one in here because the idea here is that I'm going to have the B minus, which is the battery, and then the P minus, which will be the BMS, and then the B plus. So if I need to power something, I'm going to run it off of these two. But I still have access to the cells raw minus the BMS. And that might be coming handy for if I want to run it harder than the BMS can do or I would have it set for. It just might be a good idea to have that. And so let's go ahead and wire this up. Uh, the things we're going to do is to install the bus bars into our frame. And then we'll start populating the cells. We'll also need to wire up the BMS. So I'm going to start working on that now. All right, we got some work done putting the pack together. This will show you what's going on here. <clears throat> that 3D print has a recess for the bus bars to go in. On that top, you can see I'm using bolts to kind of get it to sink in and secure itself, and also to keep things in line as I add the cells so I don't accidentally create a short by something moving around. So I got one more row here to do, but before I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and solder on some balance leads to terminal rings here. Uh, just to be <clears throat> safe, I'm going to go ahead and use the, uh, the, the uh, end of the ground and then the positive, and then I'm going to have to be careful of, of placing them here on these points so they don't actually create any shorts and stuff. So I'm going to work on that now before I finish populating the cells, and we'll uh, go from there. All right, we've got the backpack mostly put together. We got the last row to put in. All of these are in the same orientation. We want to cross this, but these, this top row is where it gets a little funky. You can tell we're having to skip around to get our series, in, series correct. And so I'm being really careful. These bars are pretty close to each other. I went ahead and put in bolts to keep them where they're at so I can do one at a time. And so I'm going to start working on that. As you can tell, we've got our uh, balance lead wires. The only one left to connect is the um, end of the positive, and then we'll be able to go from there. And then I'll tape the deck up, make sure it's nice and um, you know secure with some Kapton tape. Um, I'm not going to secure it in the box. I'm just going to let it sit there. The weight is going to be fine. I might put some padding around just to make sure it doesn't shift around too badly, but it, it's pretty not a super snug fit, but it's it's good enough. And so we'll get in close, and then we'll do a capacity test, and we'll call it a video. All right, guys, the pack is complete. We've got the BMS hooked up, lead wires. I know it's not the prettiest thing in the world, but that's what I love about doing something like this with this 3D printed top is all the ugly stuff and the BMS leads and all that stuff is underneath. Uh, this top part, these all obviously are all energized. So what I'll probably do is get some hot glue and cover every terminal to make sure nothing silly happens. Might even put a sheet down or, or plastic sheet or something to insulate. But uh, if you notice here, we've got our B minus, we've got our P minus, which is you know the load. So if you were to use these two posts, you're going straight off the battery. If you're using these two posts, then you're going through the BMS. And so that's what we're going to connect to in our battery box. So let's go ahead and get it in the battery box, make sure everything works, and then we'll do a capacity test. All right, we've got everything buttoned up. I'm doing a depletion right now. I've got two high watt 12 volt USB adapters and the cigarette lighter adapters. Uh, there's USB A is on there, and so right now with a semi industrial fan, um, a small camping fan, some charging banks, a lap uh, iPad, I'm pulling about 10 amps. Uh, like I said, the fuse has got 30 amps. The BMS is 60, but I went ahead and went into the software and lowered that down to 30 because I don't want to overload that fuse for any reason. So once this is completely depleted, we'll try charging it up and see what our capacity is. All right, we've depleted the battery to the BMS was cut none and out. And it's like down to like nine some volts, but it's bounced back up to 11 overnight. Um, so basically it's at zero. We're gonna charge it to 14.4 at 10 amps and see how long it takes and then see how much capacity we get into the cells. So I'm gonna work on that now. All right, guys, we finished doing our charging session. I've let it sit overnight after it got up to 14.4 and it settled about 3.3 on my bench power meter. The one that's built into the case isn't as accurate, so this is 13.4, but it gives you a general idea. 
So total capacity, we got 1.1 kilowatt hour of energy in here, and that equals to about 80 amp hours. And since we were charging at 10 amps, it roughly took about eight hours to get there. So that all works out and makes sense. Uh, so let's just do a final review of this case and batteries and such. Um, I'm really happy with this so far. <clears throat> the only thing I'm, I'm, I just wish was different was I wish the Anderson connectors and these terminal posts weren't on the switch. And actually I can go in and probably wire that and I may do that in the future. But just let me give you a couple warnings. Um, these 12 volt utility only have 10 amp capability. So if you're going to use an inverter, like a 300 watt plug-in inverter, you could max that out uh, if, you, if you're not careful. So if you're going to do that, I would use an inverter such as this one that has, um, this one I like because it has an XT60 connector on it. And I just soldered that to uh, wiring and then put my own Anderson connector on there. And so this gives me 300 watts. And since this is on 12 volt with a 30 amp fuse, that should be like 380 or you know up to 400 or something like that. And so that should be more safe. Um, and so I'll have a link on this in the description, or affiliate link through Amazon and stuff to the connectors, to the box and on the batteries. Um, these batteries are top uh, band batteries. I got these from Battery Hookup. Now this is from their older stock. Uh, they currently have ones in stock that have a blue wrapper on them. But from what I can tell, they're identical. 25 amp hour, 3.2 LiPo 4, a lithium um, polymer phosphate or something like that. Um, and so if you want to pick those up, use my coupon code TECH and that will help you out. And uh, just one other note on these is the USBs are 18 watt max. And so you're not going to get super, super speed charging, but you'll probably get high speed charging out of those. So I hope you guys enjoyed um, and uh, see you on the next one.